Okay, this is like one of the coolest things I think I own. Uh, this belonged to my grandpa. And look at this thing. You can probably guess what it is. This is a pair of pocket binoculars. Like it's actually meant to, to be carried around in your pocket. And you pop the thing open and the lenses come out. And you, act, you actually look, you look at the printing on the front here. It says coded lens and it says made in Japan. Wow. This was back. The funny thing about that is that this was back when made in Japan was not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, like it was like China. It was like, yeah, you know. like. It wasn't until, like, maybe the late 70s that Japan started really making good shit. You know, yeah. like, really, like, like Sony. Yeah. Like, everything Sony I've ever owned has been just immaculate. Yeah. Like, I have a stereo that I bought in 2012 that's, like, that works perfectly still. Yeah. I have a, uh, uh, a Sony Dream Machine clock radio from yeah. the late 80s that still works perfectly. It still looks like new. Everything on it still works perfectly, and it's almost 35 years old. Yeah, to me, the thing with Sony, what really jettisoned Japan and Sony would be the Nintendo, the original NES, yeah. and then also, um, for Sony, the Walkman. Those are really the technologies that just, you know, brought Japan to the forefront of technology. Yeah. But this was back in the, I'm guessing, 1960s, just by the looks of this. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty accurate to guess that, that these were made in the 60s. They have a cool kind of steampunk look to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. If the only thing the only, is that the colors are off, like the 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 metal, if the metal was like brass, and the this black part were like some kind of leather or something, it would look it would be like the coolest looking steampunk thing, and it would be like it would be like real steampunk, yeah, not like hipster steampunk. I mean, this looks like this would this looks like something that could really exist because it did really exist, yeah. But um, I'll pop this thing open. I'll show you how. It, you see that? Oh wow. They just pop open. Now, you can tell, I mean, and this is Apex there. These things are flimsy. I mean, like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to give the impression that they're like, that they're high technology because they're not. And I actually don't like opening this up too much because I feel like every time I open it up, it wears them out a little bit yeah. more. Um, it, it, like, and then closing it, you have to push this thing and it closes and and they're a little bit of a gimmick because the magnification on these are are pretty weak. They're like three x or five x maximum, mm. so you don't really get very much magnification. They're really more like a conversation piece. They look badass. Like they look like some sort of like spy or FBI guys, like secret binoculars. They are just really fucking cool looking, and uh, yeah, I wish they were better built because they're so. The concept is so cool, and they'd be they'd be handy like if you um, if there was something like just out of your sight, yeah. like if there was a sign or something that you're you can almost read but you can't, you know. Yeah. Then you could whip these out and then you could read the sign. It would give, give you just enough mag magnification that you could read the sign. But um, yeah, so and then I'll you push that. They snap back shut. I have to make sure that they snap shut in the right way because like there that just to show you how they open up again I have to make sure that the two sides of the of the shell the clam shell close together and don't don't aren't straddled but yeah pretty cool thing not really a practical thing to use but just a cool thing to show people when you showed me it I thought it was a weird flask yeah, that's what I thought first when I when I first saw it. I, I thought, hey, what is this like? Some kind of you put your rum here, you put your coke there, you shake it, and you gotta. <laughs> I also wondered if it was like a really tiny film camera. Yeah, like a spy camera or something. That's why I was saying it looked sort of like an FBI kind of like spy cam. Yeah, you know. or like a a really little Super Eight camera, like a like a novelty one or something. But yeah, so pretty cool thing. Well, it's interesting, too, to think about it, like, with the construction, with what people value. Like, this was all pre-VHS, pre-home entertainment. You would have your over-the-air channels and your AM radio stations. Yeah. And that was it for entertainment. Otherwise, you'd have to, like, go look at birds, maybe, with this. Or you'd be, you know, out and about. And it's, it's interesting, like, would you put this in your pocket? Would you put it in your suitcase? Or when, 
when would you really utilize something like this? Yeah, I would think like bird watchers, um, people who do a lot of stuff outside. Um, it's the kind of thing that would really attract kids, yeah. especially boys. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing like it doesn't have as many practical applications as you first think when you see it. Yeah. But it's just it's just such a cool thing to have. It's a cool thing to look at. It's a little. It, I think of it as like a little work of art. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, uh, showing like antiques and like talking about Americana and history, make sure to like and subscribe to Captain Unusual.